Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about how much Dungeons and Dragons every single tabletop role player should play. Okay, because the amount is between 40 per, 40 and and I'm not going to bury the lead here. Every single tabletop role playing game, to, tabletop role playing gamer who is not a casual, and we're going to talk about casuals in a minute, should play between 40 and 60 percent of their role playing should be in Dungeons and Dragons, the current edition which is 5th edition, when it is 6th edition, they should be playing 6th edition. We're gonna, And I know this is an incredibly bold statement, uh, and I'm going to back it up. I need to back that up with some facts and some figures, and like I need to support this very unusual and uh, this, this, po this position that I have that really I don't think anybody else has right now. And that's okay. I'm totally okay to be a vanguard, to be out ahead of the crowd. Okay. So let's talk about this, all right? So first and foremost, why should every single tabletop role-playing gamer except casuals, which I think are 5% of the actual market, play um, Dungeons and Dragons? Well, first of all, let's talk about who plays tabletop role-playing games and who play, uh, let's play, talk about who plays tabletop role-playing games. There are three types of, there are three types of participants. <clears throat> Dungeon Masters and Players, Game Masters and Players, right? well, for tabletop role-playing games, it's Game Masters and Players. There's three types. There's Casuals, there's Emergents, and there's Stalwarts, okay? What are these, right? Well, a Casual is a very narrow band of group, okay? A Casual is someone who believes Dungeons & Dragons is just for fun and believes what many, many, many D&D &D commentators are saying today, that as long as you're having fun, you're doing it right, there is no wrong way to play D&D. I definitely disagree with that. I want to explain why, and we're going to get there. A casual genuinely believes this. They believe that they can do no wrong in the way they're playing Dungeons & Dragons, and that the point of the game, the point of Dungeons & Dragons, is to have fun. I don't agree with either one of those. We'll, we'll, we'll get there, all right? Um, and so that's what they believe. That's what they do, okay? And here's the thing. I believe that casuals are about 5% of the tabletop role-playing game world. And the reason why is... That is a very narrow opinion of Dungeons and Dragons. It's a very shallow opinion of Dungeons and Dragons. It's a very uninformed opinion of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, oh, of tabletop role-playing games overall, also, right? Uh, of let me just keep it at the tabletop role-playing game level. That they think playing tabletop role-playing games, the point is to have fun. Okay. Now, so it's tru truly purely casuals. Okay. What are emergents and stalwarts? Okay. Emergents are people who are like, whoa, whoa. I was having fun with this tabletop role-playing game, but wait a second, you know, I'm playing a character now and I just read a transformative book. I read a book, right, to actually, literally, I just read a book that just, just so I could understand what my character understands, and the book had a lot of wisdom and it was really incredibly informative. Oh, oh my gosh, here I am sitting on the other side of this, and my life, I, I have a wealth of knowledge I didn't have before. I have empathy for people I didn't have before because my, my character is so different from me. And then they then they say, and you know what? I'm reading more overall. I'm paying attention to things that I don't generally pay attention to because it's not just me in my head. There's this other character in my head now, right? And they're like, wait, if I'm growing as a person and my relationship with the people I'm playing with is better and I'm becoming a better person, was this just for fun or is this a transformative life element? Is this tabletop role-playing game a transformative life element? That's an emergent, right? And guess what? Emergents go find additional information about the games they play, tabletop role-playing games they play, on YouTube from D&D &D commentators and from tabletop role-playing game commentators. From tabletop role-playing game commentators, right? Those are emergents, right? There's, And I would say that 45%, you know what? I would say, you know what? Yeah, I think I would take it higher than that. I would say that 55% of the tabletop role-playing game community is emergent, right? So 5% are casuals, 55% are emergents, and then 40% are stalwarts. What's a stalwart? A stalwart is a person who understands that tabletop role-playing games are a life element. They're a transformative, uh, they're a transformative vector for art, literature and gaming, right? And that this incredibly, incredibly robust hobby of, and actually not even a hobby, this new discipline, this new body of knowledge that is tabletop role-playing games 
came was invented in 1974 by Gary Gygax and it just has been on a rocket road to importance and significance and momentum and motivation and transformation since 1974. It's 46 years old now and frankly we've barely scratched the surface of what these games are capable of. Now Dungeons and Dragons is the flagship. It is the it is the flagship of the uh, of this entire thing, okay? It is the flagship of of everything we're the Dungeons and Dragons is the flagship of the tabletop role-playing game industry, okay? Now, I believe that all table to all, that 95% of tabletop role-playing games, emergence and stalwarts, right, should play, should always, always, always play Dungeons and Dragons, okay? And, re, and they should play it 40 to 60 percent of their time. Okay. Now, why is the range so much? Why is it forty to sixty percent? Because it's difficult to manage campaigns. I get that, right? You know, you're in a campaign, right? So basically, um, so basically, you you have this this situation where you are you're managing a campaign, and then you need to move from one campaign to another. So the way I would do it is, I think if you run a campaign, you need to go to the next campaign, right? Uh, when, when you run a tabletop role-playing game, you can run any game you want, right? Feel free. Play Traveler, um, play uh, My Little Pony, uh, play um, any Powered by the Apocalypse game, you know, play Fiasco, um, play uh, Blades in the Dark, uh, you know, play, play Gamma World, play any game you want, right? Eclipse Phase, uh, Call of Cthulhu, lots of great games, right? But as soon as you're done with that campaign, you need to return to Dungeons & Dragons. Why? Why do emergence and stalwarts, 95% of the tabletop role-playing game community, why do they have to play Dungeons & Dragons? Well, here's the thing. Tabletop role-playing games are 46 years old. They are massively misunderstood, and they are massively undervalued. And guess what? We are looking at the very, very real death of the, movie, of the American movie industry right now. It's a multi-billion dollar industry that nobody saw the uh, the value of, right? They're like, oh, we can put this, we can put these movies that have lived on 30, 30 foot screens on six inch screens and just kill the exhibition um, industry, the movie exhibition industry, the movie theater industry. No, you cannot, right? Like it is incredibly important that it that it does not become like the American arcade uh, industry, right? You you cannot do this. You have to you have to understand the importance of it, right? And so TT bar G's are on a preface, precipice, right? They're primarily print product, okay? That's the that's the pinnacle of the pro, uh, that's that's the pinnacle of production for Dungeons and Dra for Dungeons and Dragons and for the entire tabletop role playing game industry. The most innovative, best production material is being made by Wizards of the Coast, okay? And uh, Hasbro Gaming, of course, uh, who owns Wizards of the Coast. And so you cannot let in this industry. It's not safe. It's not you know you can't just sit around and play and play for fun, right? And think, oh, this is all going to be fine. Your industry will die, okay? We are up against a wall. We are fighting for players against the board game industry, fighting for players really largely against the video game industry. It's so, it's so easy to forget humans, right? And just go sit on your couch and play another video game, right? And that industry can swallow our industry whole. They're swallowing our greatest talent right now, right? If you don't know this, pay attention. Tabletop role-playing game uh, artists and writers for a long time have, uh, you know, scrabble away for dirt money in the in the TTRPG in, in, uh, environment and then go make real money in the video game uh, environment um, because that, you know, sad, shriveled um, intellectual property, ses you know, abyss that really doesn't, help our society in any way um, that they are stealing our people our best people right and, and they have the money to do it because they they enable people to be lesser right whereas tabletop role-playing games enables people to be greater right nobody's reading more books because they're reading a, 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 because they're playing a video game right come on right uh, but they are a lot of people who are reading a lot more books and being a lot more social and balanced and empathetic because they're playing tabletop role-playing games right you have to be able to do math. You have to be. You have to be social. You have to be. Uh, you have to be able to read really well, right? And you know, and tabletop role-playing games demand more and more and more 
as you go up that ladder, as you stop being a casual, go to emergent and become a stalwart, okay? So why 95% of all tabletop role-playing gamers must continue to play Dungeons and Dragons is we are not out of the weeds, okay? This game, this industry is only 46 years old. It's massively misunderstood, massively misvalued, right? Uh, it's just like uh, Marvel in the 80s. Nobody knew what it was worth. It was, it was it, They had billion, multi-billion dollar IPs that they sold for beans to Sony and to Fox and all these other people because everybody thought this is this is just useless fun, right? They didn't realize that you know superheroes would become would would, would become these hugely iconic um, sources of mental health, of um, of learning, of industry, of change, of social and cultural impact. They didn't know, right? So if you are listening right now to some D and D or tabletop role playing game commentator telling you that the point of the game is to have fun, right? You are listening to the people who allowed Marvel to get sold for scrap to sell half of its best properties off for scrap in the 80s. They're shockingly wrong. Shockingly wrong, right? Don't let them mislead you. Don't let them miss make you so you don't understand the value of what you have. And Dungeon and here's the thing. The tabletop role playing game industry is less than 100 million dollars a year. A single yacht costs that. It is one of the smallest industries that exist. It could be gone in a blip, right? And the way it gets gone is you continuing to listen to commentators that tell you the point of Dungeons and Dragons is fun. Listen, many, you know, millennia ago, the first cave lady clubbed a saber tooth to death, right? And drug that thing back and threw it over a fire and cooked it for her village, right? Or for her, her clan, right? And, uh, you know, her saber tooth uh, hunting clan, right? The, the people who were with her, right? And for the first time, you know, she took it, you know, at some point, for the first time, this woman took the blood, scrawled it on the wall, right? And they're like, what are you doing? And she's like, look, it's, a, it's an iconic picture of, you know, of the mammoth we saw the other day. And they're like, well, you know, why are you doing it? She's like, you know what? I enjoy it. She says that the first day. And then the second day, she draws another painting on the wall. And they're like, hey, you need to go out and get another saber tooth. Why are you wasting your time on this fun? You said you enjoyed it. You have, you're doing it for fun? And she's like, yeah, I was doing it for fun yesterday. But now I realize that maybe it's more than that. Maybe it's a way to communicate. Maybe it's a way to express. Maybe it's a way to feed myself in a way that doesn't go into my stomach. But goes into my soul or my mind. Right? And they're like, no, 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 no. It's just fun. It doesn't matter. Fun. It's just fun. Right? Don't let anyone tell you that the point of playing Dungeons and Dragons, the point of playing tabletop role-playing games is fun. And don't let anybody distract you from the idea that 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 emergence and stalwarts can ignore the game that anchors the hobby and make sure it remains alive in a time where these modern ages is going to crush hobbies. Who plays Pogs today? Right? What's the marble what's the marble hobby like today? Right? We're on a precipice. It needs to be defended. We need to realize that what we have is valuable and special. It's a body of knowledge. There is right and wrong connected to it. Right? It is a discipline. And just like any other discipline, there can be mastery and expertise. It goes beyond line, you know, it is it is as foolish to say D&D is for fun as it is for for anyone to say art is just lines on a wall. Don't be fooled. Don't listen to commentators who are saying the point of Dungeons and Dragons is fun. It's not. It goes way beyond that. That's my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.